Hello, welcome back to Rust 101. This is video 41. Can you believe it? Uh, we are doing exercises uh, to try and understand a bit more about async Rust. We've implemented the server part of a chat server. Um, and now we're going to implement the client part of a chat server. Um, so um, a quick recap on how the server works. We run the server. Then we can send messages to it. So we're opening up Netcat, which just sends like inf uh, requests over TCP. We can send a message like, I am the user Andy, and then I send a message, hi viewers. Um, and we get back JSON. So basically, when you talk to the server, you send it JSON, it gives you back JSON saying, this person said this thing. Um, so now I presume we're going to write a client which like crafts that JSON so we don't have to type it in manually like this. Um, so let's have a look at the client code, I guess. Um, and I guess we also want to be able to run the client, which I assume it will be something like this. Okay, and it says, all right, it prompts us to like enter our username and stuff like that. So that's how that's going to work. All right, so I guess we're going to leave a server running. And then we'll have, we've got a couple of other terminals here which, which we can run clients when the time comes. So let's have a look at the, so a quick recap of server code. No, let's not recap the server code. Server code listens on TCP port, uh, for connections. And then it receives those JSON messages and it sends out those JSON messages that you saw. So how the client works, presumably, is it prompts you for your username. Here we are. And here it is pulling it in. It connects to the server. Um, and it, that gives it back. Once you connect to a server using T, T, TCP stream connect, it gives you back a TCP stream, which you can read and write to, which we then split with this into split thing. So now we've got a reader and a writer for it. Um, and then we send, we need to send our username as JSON to the server and also a new line. And then it'll tell us we're connected. And then we're going to um, spawn a task for handling input. And then every time we get an input on stood in, it's going to handle it, I guess, by sending stuff to the right stream. And then it's also going to spawn another task for handling incoming messages so it can print them out. Um, and then it's going to Oh, right. And this is just to like stop when they both finish, right? So this join is going to, is going to stop when both of these tasks complete. All right. So we've got a couple of to do's to do up there and we've got a couple of to do's to do up here. Just wondering what we're going to do about testing. I think probably we're not going to test these code they've given us. And I think probably we're not going to test this. Oh, I guess we could write a function that does this, can't we? Um, I mean, that's not how, what the JSON should look like. <laughs> but anyway, um, we could write a function to do this, and then we could test that reasonably easily, couldn't we? So let's do that. So um, it's probably async, and it's going to be send user. It's going to take in. It's probably going to return, like, result of nothing. Unit. Let's call it unit. Bracket bracket is called unit. Um, it's going to return a result same similar to main. And it's going to take in the username that we've just read in, which is... Oh, it's already converted it to a, a message here. Let's do that inside here instead. Um... I think that's going to work out okay. We'll see. It's probably okay. We'll see. So that means that we're going to, the username is going to be a string. It's also going to need to take in some kind of writable uh, thing, but I'm going to make it be an async write like we did in the previous video. Oh no, it's going to be, it's going to be, we're going to be templated. It's going to be a generic function 
where this thing is an async right and what we found last time is that we also needed to make it unpin we're not sure why we don't we don't care the compiler led us that way um, and by making it async right like this if I can import that um, we can then unit test this function so we better return OK of unit and now we've got a, a thing we can unit test which is going to currently fail so go for a good test more tests and is this going to be an async test? yes it is uh, so that's a Tokyo test so Tokyo test basically means run this async thing and treat it like a test um, and what is it going to be? Uh, sending sending user serializes to JSON, something like that. We're going to call our new function, which is called send user. And I guess we're going to pass it in like a writer. What, what was the order of arguments? The username and then the writer. So the username could be, let's use Alice again. Um, it's called send user, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, let's, uh, let's call, let's define our thing. It thinks we're talking about a macro called write, but we're not. Uh, I think it's okay to call something write, even though there's a macro called write. We'll see. So I think just a vec of, um, like probably a vec of U8 is okay. Needs to be, um, mutable. And we probably need to pass in a mutable reference to it so that it gets, um, modified and we can check its content. So afterwards we're going to do some kind of assert about what's in this writer. Um, which will be, I don't know. It's not going to be the empty string, it's going to be something like user ls Don't forget to escape all those quotes. And don't forget the new line at the end. Right, so it's having trouble finding this function. It won't, oh, oh no, it wouldn't import it for me, but now it will. Okay, good. Saves, saves me figuring out what I was supposed to type. And this should be a string, like so. Uh, and that uh, returns. That needs a waiting, and it probably also ret it returns results we need to unwrap it to. Like so. Excuse me, I'm slightly croaking. All right, so now we've got a test that should fail, right? Let's re should we leave the server running. I'll move this tab out of the way. We use this tab to run our new test, which fails because we're expecting this string. That's really hard to read, isn't it? It'd be better to um, convert it into a string. I think it, we want to say from UTF-8. Uh, what happens if we just do that? Um, and this should be just a string. Is that going to work? No, string from can't be made from a vec of u8. Um, but we can do from utf8 and then unwrap, maybe. Seems okay. Right, so now we just get a better error message. Yeah, like, so it was supposed to be um, user code analysis, and actually it was nothing, right? So, 
Um, it's slightly arguable, like how much processing should you do on something before you assert about it? But in this case, it's just so much easier to read the error message. It seems worth it. All right. So what we've got to do is we've got to write something. Um, and we did this before. Um, in the previous video, we need to do write, giving it some kind of um, vec of u8 again, because it's um, bytes. So let's call this um, serialized username. And we probably need to await this and question mark it. In fact, we could get rid of that, that stuff and just let that be the return value, maybe. I don't know. What does write return? Uh, or does it not return a result at all? Yeah, no, it return. Oh, it returns a number, so that's no good. Go back to how we were. So, what happened there was I tried to just say the return value from write should get returned as this result of unit. But write doesn't return result of unit, it returns result with a number in it of how many bytes it wrote. So instead we add the question mark, which means if there's an error, we bail out. But otherwise we return OK of unit. All right, so we haven't actually made this serialized username yet. This should be serializing by using said a JSON um, to vec on username. I think. I don't like calling this username. This is user, isn't it? Uh, oh, it also doesn't like it yet. Partly because I mistyped username. Partly because it needs a reference. Now let's rename this to user. It's either a message or it's a user, right? Uh, this probably takes a reference. No, it was the fact that we need to unwrap it or do something with the error, let's say. But in this case, I think uh, user should always serialize. OK, so you can expect that to happen. Um, this should be mutable. We've got some kind of warning. Oh, it's only used in tests. That's OK. It'll be used properly in a minute. We're nearly there. We missed out the new line. We always do that, don't we? So let's write one more thing. We did this before by doing a character as a U8. So I feel like write U8 should be a tiny bit more efficient than write because it already knows it's only ever writing one character. That's why I went to the effort of doing that as opposed to just doing write and then um, providing some kind of um, string slice. It's like totally unneeded. Um, but in some theoretical world, it's slightly faster. All right, so we write a send user function. So now we can replace our to do with, hopefully we can anyway, Something like this, which takes in, I think it takes in username, comma, TCP, right? Is that right? Or a mutable reference to TCP, right, let's say. And because send user is generic, it takes in a, a W, which all W has to be is async write plus unpin. So a mutable reference to a TCP writable writing writer half is it does comply with async write and unpin. So um, send user is using this mutable reference to um, thing that's working. So we should now get a little bit further if we try and run this. Like this. It's going to say enter his name up, say something. It's going to say um, connected. You can now enter messages. That's what we're expecting. And then it panics at line 49 because there's another bit that's not implemented. By the way, did our server? Yeah, our server received that connection. So um, 
that kind of worked. Uh, okay, so that means we need to do the next bit, which is all this spawning stuff is done for us. So we're spawning the the two tasks, which are called handle chat input and handle incoming chats. So let's think about how we can test handle chat input. Well, the first thing would be um, if we did if we made it generic and we said this is an async write plus unpin and this was there now we should be able to quite easily write um, a test for handle chat input let's just copy what handle chat input looks like paste it down here for a sec and let's write a test which um, <clears throat> Uh, just works out what handle chat input should do. So I guess it should convert everything you type into a client message. Is that what it is? Yeah. Yeah, it's just what that's what to do says. So it's going to be sending uh, messages to as input. Um, Let's say typing messages as input. Uh, sends them as JSON. So the client is is a lot simpler than the server, um, which we did in the last video. All right. So we're definitely going to call handle chat input input. And we're going to have to wait that, and I guess that returns a result. And what we're going to pass in is something that represents standard in. Um, we might need to change this interface a little bit, but yeah, this is going to be a vector. This, I think this is going to need to be something you can read. So I think probably a str is good enough for that. So let's have message one, new line, message two, new line, message three, new line. And handle chat input takes in a std in, and it takes in something it can write to as well. So we're going to need a vector to write to like so is probably good enough and oh, no, it'll need to be a mutual reference to that so we can talk about it later like we did before and we're going to do some kind of assertion on um, this which is what got written is going to be a bunch of JSON it's not going to be user it's going to be a client message containing message one And so on. Are you going to format nicely for me? No. Nope. What if I do that? Uh, it's always because I've still got this horrible wrong code here. Okay. So we'll get to the what's wrong with. Oh well, we can import it for a start. We'll get to what's wrong with this. This isn't the right type in a second. First of all, let's make our assertion look right. So uh, I think, how do I do this? I think I'll do it like that. And it is going to be three client messages, message one, message two, and message three. Uh, now, handle chat input currently takes in a, uh, a lines of a buff reader and stuff. That seems wrong to me. Let's have a look at where it's called. And let's not do the wrapping of stood in lines in a buff reader yet. 
Ah, oh, but but we've already done that. Um, so what is the type of stood in lines? Yeah, problem is, it's a lines of buff reader of stood in. It's very concrete. I want it to be a lines of buff reader of. So I guess it can be, we can just take in a, something that is an it, uh, uh, so I happen to know that a lines is an iterator, which gives you strings. So let's see if we can make it, instead of taking in one of these, here we can add some generic types which here, which is going to be an iterator, where the item is, I don't know exactly, is it ampersand stra? Or is it string? Let's say string and see what happens, because it doesn't like the other thing. We'll get to that. Um, so now we can just say stood in it is not that, but it's an L. Now, how is the compiler coping with that? Lines is not an iterator. Oh, it's not, it's not an iterator, it's a stream. I think uh, this could get really awkward. We'll see. We'll, we won't give up yet. That looks good. No, it doesn't look good. We better look up what Tokyo IO lines is it's a lines it's the async equivalent to buff lines and the stream okay returns a stream over the lines of this reader so it yields instances of result of option of string so i think that's our problem that we need handle chat input to take in a stream where the item is result of option of string like I said, I, this might get hairy and I might have to give up on it, but it um, would be really good to be able to test this, wouldn't it? Okay, now, why is it sad? Let's, let's get a full compiler out of it. Trait stream is not implemented for Tokyo IO lines. But it just told the documentation just told me it was a stream. Um Let's have another look at what it said, the, the definition of that lines is. So we need to look at this lines thing. So, lines. So I'm looking at the actual source code of um, Tokyo now. So, lines is a struct. And presumably somewhere there must be impl stream for lines, right? No. Oh, lines, lines is an async buff read. No. No, 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 it's not. No. All right, so lines has a poll next line. Who calls this? Surely this implementation of stream must call this. Uh, okay. 
What int what traits does lines implement? It really doesn't look like it implements anything. So I think it's 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 a stream in a, a loose sense. Okay, it has this pole next line thing. But it's not actually a stream. I think that's what I'm getting. Okay, this is getting really awkward. Um, so what can we do about this? We could pass, we could just pull the first line out in some manual way. Um, Problem is that studying has got used up by this buff reader. I want to make a buff reader inside uh, my uh, handle chat input function instead of outside. Because once I'm inside, um, I can make these concrete types like buff reader. But while I'm still outside, I want it to be a generic thing. Like studying is just something that implements read, async read. But we've got this problem that we want to put out this first line. Um, you know, what is, what does lines have like a, it has a next line method. And hand, does handle chat input just call next line directly? We don't know what handle chat input does. But yeah, I'm guessing it's that's the expectation that it's just gonna call next line on it. Because it can't do much else. Okay, I, I'm feeling like I'm suffering because lines is not a stream when it should be a stream. Um But maybe I could call it into inner on it to get back the buff reader. Once I've got the buff reader, can I call into inner again? So what happens if I if I ask stood in lines for the what I presume is the buff reader inside it? And then I call I ask that for the thing it was reading. So now maybe this is a real this is a real uh, diversion. I'm sorry, viewer, if you're not interested in how to make this unit test um, make this unit testable. But it is a really awkward bit of Rust actually. Sometimes. Um, all right. So let's see what type stood in has. Yeah, has typed it in. So we're back. We're back. Okay, so that's really great. That's exactly what we wanted. We, want, we just wanted to pull one line out of study in by wrapping it in a buff reader and then a lines, calling next line once to get that to get that line that we needed. And then once we've done that, we want to get back to the actual the plain stood in, which is just something you can async read. Um, so that um, we can pass that into handle chat input. And then once we're inside handle chat input, we can then wrap it in a buff reader again, because um, we'll have gone past the kind of generic boundary now. So handle chat input is going to take in um, async, this thing which is going to be an async read. Is it an async read? Or just a read? Reader. I think it might be just a reader, it's not async. That might have been part of what was confusing me. I think. Let's see. What is complaining? Stood in is not read. What is stood in then? Um, must be something, right? Yeah, async. It's async read. Because we're saying that here. Must be read, right? 
No, in that, in that case, I wasn't getting as confused as I thought I was, and we did need an async read, um, which is fine, which is all async code, so it's fine. Bring that in. How we? How? Where are we getting to? So now, str is not async read, or reference to str is not async read. But surely, um, say string is, or reference to string. Oh, oh reference. Okay, here it, it's showing us what. So a reference to. Uh, so we should have to as bytes. A reference, a slice of u8 is async read. Fine. So, so we've got there. We can write a test where we pass in something that is readable, async readable, something that's async writable, and we and the readable thing has these messages in, and these messages, these, this JSON should come out. And all that jumping through hoops means that we can write our test like that, but also we can pass in this stood in thing, which is also async readable, and the real TCP writer, which is async writable, um, and it will all just work. And we haven't done any of the work yet, but now we should have, with any luck, a failing test. Oh, that's a run. I didn't want to run. I want a test. Yes, we have a failing test because we haven't actually implemented this thing that we need to implement. So, what we, the first thing we're going to do is rewrap this stood in in a lines thing. Now that we're inside, um, and we know the type of L, so now we can make this lines thing that wraps it. So that should still compile. I guess this might not need to be readable, but we'll see. Um, definitely lines are going to need to be readable because we're going to loop through the lines. So um, while let, I guess this is all about um, uh, next line is probably going to return an option. Some line equals stood in lines dot next line. What does that return? Result of option. So it's going to be, well, it, while this just come, it, while everything's fine, we're getting back OK, some line. Uh, does it need a waiting? Oh, no, we need an unpin. Um, and this does need a waiting. So while we're getting invalid lines, I guess maybe let's just question mark this. Like if some if there's some error, we just want to return it, right? We don't want to just silently swallow it. So um, get the next line. If that goes wrong, just return an error. Otherwise, check whether it's actually a line or whether we've finished. And uh, turn that into something we can send to. Uh, so that client message equal message, colon, colon, client message, brackets, line, I guess, just whatever that we've been given. And then we're going to serialize it. Um, we'll just use long names. It's going to be 30 JSON to vec of client message, probably with an ampersand and some like unwrapping going on. Oh, in fact, the I guess if we fail to serialize the message that the person typed, that's kind of an error that we'll, we should return. So we don't need to unwrap here because we're already returning an error. Um, now we've serialized the message. We can send it to by doing a TCP write. Um, I guess we write this the serialized client message. This somehow looks slightly different from what I was expecting. And this, I guess if this fails, uh, 
Uh, what do we do if this fails? If we, um, I guess we can just return an error as well. Although maybe we would want to do something different with that error because that's an error like we failed to send to the... Anyway, the point is, I guess we've lost the TCP connection at that point, so we may as well return. And returning with an error is probably useful. This doesn't need to be mutable. I think that's it. We send it to the server along with a new line. Oh, I missed the new line. Right, will our test pick up the lack of new line? It did. It did. Good. All right, we're doing well. We're remembering to test things that we might forget. And again, we're going to do this thing of sending a new line character like this. Now, there is apparently some effort to um, remove the need for as anywhere in the Rust code, but as in this case, I don't know if it has something different we should do. Okay, so that test, our test now passes, and I think handle chat input is now correct. So yeah, apologies for the big diversion. Looks like handle incoming chats is not going to be so bad. Um, yeah, because there's no kind of output. All we're doing is, well, it's just printing. That's not very good, is it? It's not very testable. We need to make this better. Um, but look, it's, they've kind of already written this code for us, so we don't even need to test it. There's no more to do. Is that right? Yeah, okay, this was definitely much easier exercise than the previous one. So let's just examine this code a little bit. So handle incoming chats takes, like, reads from a stream, breaks it, that stream up into lines, just like we did in the other bit, um, gets each line out, and then it says, parse it as a message. And if it's a chat message, print that the user said this. And if it's a user message, print the user joined the chat. I see. So that's why, that's why you might have, you might expect user messages to get kind of echoed. Um, but server. Okay. So I think we're done. Let's, oh, let's look at our warnings. Just a load of imports we don't need. Um, where are we getting to? Don't need that either. All right, we're done with warnings. Now, we've got our server running, so let's run our client. Give ourselves a name. Uh, we'll be Alice in here. Hi from Alice. And Alice says hi from Alice, so that's working. Now, let's connect again. Cargo run minus minus bin client. And this can be Bob. Hi, Alice. Bob says hi, Alice. Look, Bob says hi, Alice. Um, I noticed that we didn't get a so-and-so has joined the room message. And that's because the server is not rebroadcasting the user after they've um, heard from it. So I think in order for that uh, so-and-so joined the room to work, we would need to broadcast it here. Um, message user, user. Um, question mark, semicolon, maybe. Dot clone. I think that's a little missing piece. So let's restart the server, restart our clients. Server's all happy. Run the client. This will be Alice again. Now it says Alice joined the chat, which is new. Hi from Alice. Alice says hi from Alice. Now let's be Bob. Bob. Hi, Alice. 
Well, let's just see first. Yeah, Bob joined the chat now, it says. Bob says, hi, Alice. Bob says, hi, Alice. All right. So I think that's a fix as well that was missing. And we should we should have a test for that if we were really going to um, do this properly. But back to the client. Let's just quickly review what we did. So what the client does is it gets um, input from standard input. So this is just like typing in the terminal. It, it, it pulls out the first line so that we've got our username because the first thing you type is your username. And then it just gets back the standard in so that we can do our, um, make our generics work for our unit tests. Then it connects to the local host on the port that we're expecting to be, our server to be listening on, splits up the streams, uh, sends a user to say, this is my username, and then breaks up into two async tasks, one that handles input and one that handles stuff coming in from um, over the TCP socket. So when the user types, handle chat input, does its work, which is um, wrap up what you said in a client message, serialize it, send it. And when someone else says something and something comes in over TCP, handle incoming chats, does its job, which is uh, break it into lines, read the next line, deserialize it, and then just print out like what you received. And that's it. So it's pretty simple. Uh, the, all, the only pain we had was that we needed to change how handle chat input works so that it took in just an async read. Um, so we could pass in this just very um, basic thing, some bytes, uh, instead of it taking in something which had the specific type of um, standard in that it was using as part of its type. So that's the kind of thing that um, can be tricky in Rust, if, especially if you're changing something to be testable after the fact. Um, this standard in here had a very specific type that was too specific for us to use in a unit test because it had that, that, that stood in type, capital S stood in type as part of its type. And that's not something that we can just um, make a mock of. Um, so instead we had to make it generic. Uh, but what we made it generic over was something that's an async read that we later wrap in a, wrap in a concrete thing uh, called lines instead of passing in the wrapped thing already. So that was an awkwardness, but I think we got through it. I uh, hope you enjoyed. Now, looking at these exercises, the next exercise is basically to write quite a significant size program with no help at all. So I think I'm going to leave that as an exercise for you. If you would like to um, ask questions about how to implement that, please do ask in the comments or talk to me on Mastodon. If you're really keen to see me implement it, let me know. And if a few people say that they are, then maybe I'll, ha I'll give it a go. But I think we've probably had enough of me um, struggling to write and compile Rust. We'll get back onto some more uh, lectures next time. Hope you enjoyed. See you next time.